Right, my name is Matthew Lovell. I'm from Texarkana, Texas. I'm 26 years old, and uh, the confidence journey for me, uh, really, I'm a personal trainer, self-employed, have been for two years. Uh, I'm just in love with the fitness industry. Uh, confidence is huge for me. Um, every single one of my clients, when they come into the gym, uh, they're they're timid, and it's amazing watching them grow as human beings and grow in confidence. And I feel like most generally, um, they look at personal trainers as people who don't have any flaws. You know, however, we're, however we are right now, that's how we hit the floor, and we've been like that ever since. That we don't have any flaws, that we don't have any insecurities, that we're 100% confident all of the time, and that's just not the case. Uh, I have my flaws, I have my insecurities. One of them being gynecomastia, which is one of the things that um, this confidence journey is about. Uh, so I really just wanted to put myself out there, um, show some of my insecurities, and um, maybe help people uh, kind of get through some of their insecurities, you know. Um, the way I see it, you know, there are tons and tons of, of hurdles in this life, and my job is to help as many people over those hurdles as possible, you know, uh, just make a difference. And that's what Dr. Malice is doing here. And so now, do you, do you compete? Uh, yes, sir. I uh, did my first bodybuilding show last year, May 20th, at the Steve Kuko Classic, okay. and I have my second bodybuilding show actually in four weeks. Uh, the Texas State Fitness okay. Fitness Expo in Arlington. Okay, I think I'll be there. Awesome! I look forward to seeing you there. So, um, and so, were you were you an athlete in high school? Has fitness always been easy for you? Okay, so I will tell you. Um, I was. I would consider myself an athlete. Uh, I didn't lift weights. Uh, I played baseball. Uh, I'm originally from Locksburg, Arkansas. Population 711 people total. We didn't have a football team. We didn't have a weight room. We had baseball, track, and basketball. Oh, and golf. Can't forget about golf. Yeah. Um, and that's all we offered. So I played baseball all the way from T-ball up to my junior year. I didn't play my junior year so I could focus on powerlifting my senior year. I got into it at the Southern Powerlifting Federation, which is a it's an individual powerlifting federation. It's not school related. And um, I started lifting weights when I was 16. Uh, one of my best friends drug me to the gym. I did not want to go. Uh, I met him at my grandparents' canoe rental in Broken Bow, Oklahoma. He was had came in from college and uh, worked for them over the summer, and so did I my, my 16th summer up. And um, he was big, he was strong, and I just really looked up to him. And uh, one day he was like, man, you're going to go lift weights with me. I said, no, I'm not. Not me. Uh, I'm skinny, I'm not going to be able to lift anything, people are going to laugh at me. He said, dude, nobody cares what you're lifting, nobody cares what you're doing in there. Everybody's in there to better themselves. I was like, yeah, be that as it may, I'm good. And uh, he said, in these exact words, you're going to go to the gym with me or I'm going to drag your skinny ass to the gym. In those exact words. And uh, long story short, he pretty much drug me to the gym. And uh, the first two weeks was a mix of him making me, me making myself. And then I'll never forget the very first thing I noticed. It was a, a small little vein in my forearm. As soon as I saw that, it was game over from there. Uh, and, I, and I can tell you're still, uh, you know, let's uh, give us uh, give us a left bicep. Uh, a I left get, bicep? Yeah, I can, see, I can tell you're, you're struggling with biceps right now. So. I am. I'm going flat. I'm going flat. It's that part of the prep. But um, when I was 19, I uh, tore my left pec doing bench press. I had, did powerlifting from uh, 17 to 19, tore my left pec at uh, 19 years old. Um, after that, once I finally healed back up from that, I just was a, I would call it a casual lifter. You know, I didn't really have a purpose for doing it. I just did it because I loved doing it. No other reason. Um, when I was 22, uh, I had a motorcycle wreck. Um, I T-boned a truck going 55 on my Hayabusa and uh, broke some ribs, punctured, collapsed my right lung, broke my collarbone, uh, bum my right shoulder, and both of my knees up. And the doctor said that had I not been built as well as I was, had I not been lifting uh, strength training like I had been, that it would have been far worse. Spent three days total in the hospital. As soon as they took my chest tube out, they let me go home. 
uh, recovery. I, I don't like being still, so I sped the recovery up some and uh, went back to, to lifting like normal, you know, before too long. Um, it wasn't until really about uh, two and a half years ago that I ever gave bodybuilding a thought. It was one of those things, you know, I, I was a power lifter. I came a power, a power lifter. And, you know, we kind of always just kind of made fun of them, the bodybuilders. Yeah. You know, it's all for looks. You know, I had a buddy that didn't even wear biceps because he said, that's just an ornament on the Christmas tree. I want to add to my weight. You know, I want to get into the lowest weight division I can, be the strongest I can. Biceps, they're useless. Okay, so that, that had been my mentality coming up through the, the mentors that I had through lifting. And um, so I was just always against it, you know. I would never be the type to put a speedo looking thing on and come up on stage in front of hundreds of people. I'm, I'm, I'm a modest guy. I wouldn't do that. And uh, I moved down to Texarkana, Texas, where I live now, and got around bodybuilders. And uh, they started talking to me more about it. Hey, you ought to think about bodybuilding. You know, you have some decent genetics. Um, and I was like, I'm good, you know, thank you, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm, I'm good. And the more they talked to me about it, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it, the more I just kind of started obsessing about it, and uh, picked my first show, held off for a while on picking a show, because I'm like, well, I'm not ready, I'm just going to wait till I'm ready. The fact is, you're never going to be ready. You have to pick a show. After you do that first show, that's going to show you what you really need to work on. Right. Um, and looking at my pictures from last year to this year, it is insane. But uh, just any advice I could give to someone that is thinking about bodybuilding, just do it. Don't wait for the right time. Just do it. Get that first one out of the way, and that will 100 times over help you train for your next one. Don't wait for that big friend, family member, uncle to drag you to the gym. Just do it. Just do it. So um, so how has, uh, you know, now that you've been you know, working out for a while, so how has it helped your self-confidence? Oh, uh, tremendously. Um I'm still a very modest person, you know, um, I look at bodybuilding now more of an art. Uh, my, my view towards it has completely changed. I don't look at it as me being arrogant and getting on stage to show everybody my muscles. I look at it as an art, you know, you put in work year round to sculpt your body, to, to build it, and then you spend a certain portion of that shaping it down. Uh, trying to get as much um, symmetry as you possibly can to the posing itself is an art. People don't realize how hard the posing is. And I have had just this prep three nightmares about me getting up to get ready on stage and realizing I haven't been practicing posing. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go on stage. <laughs> or you forget your pose. <laughs> well, it, you can't really forget the pose. It's just the 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 thought that you're going to get up there and you're going to be completely lopsided because you don't have a mirror to look in. You know, anytime you're practicing, you're looking in the mirror, you can tweak it a little bit. But you have to have enough muscle memory. You have to hit that pose so many times to where you can get up there, no mirror in front of you, and boom, bust it out, and it's just like it needs to be, you know? And so that is one of the scariest parts because you can see how your body looks. And no matter how good of a physique you have, if you can't showcase it once you get on stage, yep. then you don't really have anything. You know, someone with a lesser physique can absolutely beat you. Yeah. So um, it's all an art form, you know, and I just, I love the sport itself. Uh, I do. That's awesome. I think you're going to be a, a great asset. So maybe tell everybody if they're looking for a personal trainer where they can find you, where they can find you online. Okay, so um, Matt Lovell underscore CFT is my uh, Instagram my hashtag or my Instagram username. Uh, Matthew Lovell on Facebook, um, and I will have as my profile picture. There will be a one of my stage photos from last year's show, which will soon be changing in about four weeks. Um, and just reach out to me on there. Uh, you can message me. I check those pretty frequently. I try to stay on top of that. 
Uh, I train at the Anytime Fitness in Wake Village, Texas, but I do offer uh, online training. So just shoot me a message. We'll get together. It always starts with a one-on-one -on -one, uh, FaceTime just so I can talk to you and figure out exactly what your goals are, what you're going for, learn about your routines um, to best put together a program for you. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.